Hi, thanks for having me. So this is about a new book that I have been writing over the last year with Dr. Frangia Quinto on the invasive plant species of Britain and Ireland, and it's aimed at us being a field guide so that people can identify these things in the field. So why would we want to write about invasive species? Well, in the BSBI Atlas, we've now been shown that there are more non-native species than native species in Britain and Ireland. And what those plants are, are sometimes the ones that are picked up by horizon scanning, um, but often it isn't. And those ones, perhaps we're not seeing so much in the wild. So which ones are we really seeing? Um, the new laws in Ireland and the trend for rewilding are really bringing attention to non-native species now. And in Ireland's case, you can be prosecuted increasingly for having those on your land. I think like Northern Ireland already has, and so probably the UK too. When you're looking at this whole geographical area, the SBI connects all the botanists across Britain and Ireland, the Channel Islands, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, and the Republic. And plants can move with us through these areas quite easily, or through birds or um, other vectors. And they'll find similar ha habitats and niches to occupy. So there is a lot of movement of these plants between different geographical areas in Britain and Ireland. So we need biosecurity to make sure that we're not inadvertently bringing them. And we also need species awareness so that we know what is native in certain areas and what is not native, because that's really an easy mistake to make when you're not used to the different floras in the different areas, but just looking at the whole. So, for example, Traveller's Joy is not native to Ireland, um, and that might surprise you a little bit. So it's something that we would not want for anybody to bring to Ireland, um, whereas over here it'd be seen as just another part of the native flora. So the data that we're collecting is really important, but obviously it's not great if we don't have good ident identification. So field courses at universities have become quite few, um, which means field skills are getting less attention maybe at colleges than they used to be. So young ecologists and other nature enthusiasts need accessible guides to this diverse group of species. And it's quite easy, I think, when you're out recording to turn a blind eye to garden escapes when there are rare plants and really nice habitats that you'd like to look at as a priority. But birds don't care which Cotoniaster species they are transporting into protected areas. And obviously they can't ID them either. So <laughs> it's a bit tricky to know sometimes what you're looking at. In Ireland, we also have the National Biodiversity Data Centre, which collects thousands of records each year from citizen scientists. And those will need verifying ultimately by BCRs like myself. So we really need good identification to get good data, and that then informs everything else that we do. The legislation is quite complex. So we've included in the book an at a glance sheet of which species are on which pieces of legislation. So there are different pieces of legislation in Ireland, then here, and then European law covers other certain species. So we just want to make sure that it's very clear what's on legislation where. And lots of the problematic plants that we see in the field are just not on any legislation at all. So if I can be a bit cheeky and say, you know, BSBI, you could, um, slightly push, since you've got such great data, which species you would like to see being included on legislation, particularly to stop them being sold, would be very useful. So the challenges I wanted to address when looking into writing this book was firstly the identification problems that I've mentioned, and then the difficult legislation, while still getting people to be interested, because you can either be like, quite feeling like you're being blamed. I think we've all planted something that we've regretted later, or just frankly bored because we've been talking about your knees not weed for ages. And then something else that was difficult to write about in the book was things like bamboos changing behavior because we would always like to say don't have a rhizomatous bamboo, but some of the clump forming ones are now spreading. 
and the other part of that is that climate change is now making certain plants flower a bit later a bit longer and produce more viable seed and that's going to increase in the next few years and the other part of the data that is slightly difficult to work with is that although we have really good point records and we have really good presence absence data we don't have great quantitative information yet in the book, we decided that we would pick 50 species which are on nearly all the legislation. Um, and then we grouped them with other related species on legislation, followed by things that quite often are very widespread but aren't on legislation. And these might be even followed by some native species if they look very similar. The book is sectioned into forms of morphology of plants so from trees to shrubs and climbers tall herbs herbs grasses aquatics and coastal plants and we did include a few seaweeds that you might see from the shore because we felt that often botanists be walking along looking at coastal habitats and they might just be able to pick up one or two records for seaweeds as well so it's just to be aware of that group so here's a kind of just a draft picture that we've had recently from publisher you see there's a BSBI map for each group and um, we've used as many common names as possible to make sure that they're really googleable there's new photos all taken by myself and other BSBI members and colleagues which is great because we needed fresh pictures particularly of this plant broadleaf thrush um, so that's the kind of look the layout of the book we did a quick guide to the species included at the beginning. We felt that a key probably wasn't really very useful since they're so diverse. They're not a natural group of plants. Um, and we'd used this kind of key before and it went quite well in a book we did for the Department of Agri Agriculture. And this works really well as a visual vegetative key in the winter because you have all the leaves side by side. So you can just very quickly have I found this and check no, I'm good, or yeah, I have to send in some kind of report that we have a problem. Other things I learned whilst writing was this book was when we're looking at this group, we have to dig really deep into the literature. So, for example, I had read that giant knotweed has nectar pits at the base of the petiole. It's actually on the stem just as the petiole finishes, and then you have these little pits um nectar pits in it and that's quite an important feature and it really helps separate the um hybrids from the giant knotweed which in the field is very difficult because the hybrids have quite broad um difference of based beliefs um, i would suggest that everyone get first-hand knowledge as much as possible if you can find a record near you of something go and touch it go and smell it feel it and really get to know it firsthand. So this is an example here of Tree of Heaven, the literature says it smells of mice. And that I thought was maybe a hard description for some young people who've lived without mice. And so when I did find it in the field, the smell that I got was really more of a Thai curry that you'd left in the bin overnight and that kind of slight lingering smell in the morning. If you can keep an eye on horticulture in general, you will see what species are likely to start spreading and I think that's really useful to have that connectivity with horticulture as much as possible because we can really learn from each other and then finally I really learned that many people really misunderstand the terms native and non-native species and this is something we can gently help all of our friends and family with all the time because it is really important to understand the difference and what that means. So what can we do as botanists, as BSBI botanists? We can use an app to identify garden plants. Just in general, it'll get you much closer to getting a good ID. I would suggest record everything. So even if you can only do genus level, that's useful for cotoniasters, um, booze, but that's more of a bigger group and um, that needs work, I'd say, in general. But also the number of individuals that you're finding whether they're flowering or in seed, or maybe the spread in square meters, it would be all really useful. And there is a part on the DDB that we can add that kind of information into. 
use the BSVI network. The referees and any small groups you might have are going to be really useful to chat amongst yourselves. What are you seeing? Where is it? And can you get really drilled down into the ID? Because we've only covered a certain amount of plants and other ones are quite complicated. Study your locally problematic plants in, do, in your different areas. So some areas just really have different suite of species. So the Channel Islands, the Scilly Islands have the Carpobrotus. Um, West Cork has some really nasty evergreen garden escapes. And also on holiday, you could start looking to see, to learn a little bit Northern European flora or Mediterranean flora. It's all coming. It's coming soon. So it's quite fun on holidays to learn a few little bits more. Or you could visit botanic gardens, a great source. And if you ask the head gardener, he'll take and show you the species that they've got growing there. Just probably maybe to the side, things that they know to keep an eye on. And here's a nice photo that I got of yellow azalea from Nyman's Gardens in Sussex, sent to me by the head gardener there. So a really useful network in gardens. And please do clean your boots whenever you are hiking. Use biosecurity. It's just so easy to bring things around with you. So this is the book. Um, the pre-order should be coming from Pelagic soon, in the next few months, I hope. And there will be a discount for BSBI members. So many, many thanks to everyone here um, who helped me with photos and helped me with information. And this is the dedication in the book. So please, if you're here, say hi. I really appreciate all your help. And that's it. Thank you.